And then finally, extended team models. So here, once it's to growing for advisors and so forth, uh, it's more about uh, doing the, the additional agreements. So not necessarily opening the shareholder agreement directly anymore, but rather opening the, the, the a different type of agreement. And then it may have be a path to the shareholder agreement at some point. So these are the extra operative project team members. So can be a, a designer agency doing a new brand or the whole company appearance once. It could be a lawyer doing 2% you know, ownership uh, to make sure to take care of the, all the legal things for the first three years. Uh, it could be any of these types of nature. Advisors, mentors who are there to uh, contributing their time and expertise at, at, at a great level to be available and you want to compensate them so that it is a real business relationship and not just uh, a short term uh, expected uh, free work. Uh, but you don't have to do this from the day one. There's a natural evolution to this. Uh, but, but if you want someone to commit for a journey to, to, to keep their minds uh, kind of knowing and also contributing on their own, then you definitely want to put agreement in place, including also the IPR aspect that if they're contributing something that, that you want to use in business, then it's good to have agreements in place. Investors, they will introduce their own shareholder agreement, the investment agreement as well. Trainees, you should have trainee agreements of some sort, again, including for the IPR issues, uh, again, including for, the, for, for all the different types of path you may want to start as a trainee, you may want to invite trainees, uh, but you may then also consider what would be the, the future path, uh, either by design or during, during the period. And with all of this, you should check with vision, mission, culture that, that regardless of who you, who you invite, who is looking to join your venture, that they also buy into and accept and are mainly the reason why they are joining is that they see the mission, vision and culture as a fit for them. And again, if you are missing these tools, then how would anyone know whether it would be a good fit for them. And then as a model, a stock option agreement is good. Stock option agreement is a good tool to apply for majority of these other than the investors. And in some cases, uh, perhaps the, the advisors that you would like to have for long term. Also, because most likely some of, some of them may be actually advising you on the shareholder agreement itself as well. So in these types of additional agreements, uh, in beyond uh, the, the shareholder types of topics, you have things like how can they represent the company, what type of uh, warranties you want to put in place that, that they shouldn't do, uh, what can they do, what they shouldn't be doing, uh, what is their main engagement, like, like what do they actually take apart and what level, then the compensation level, is it revenue share, is it sales commission, is it equity, is it stock option, is it combination. Um, and, and the dependency of, uh, of what their position officially is and where they work and these types of things have tax implications and you should check this and uh, typically it, it's better to make clear that they are not employee so that they are external consultant or they are working under a management agreement that they are not to be considered as employees unless you specifically want to make them to be considered as employees but then specifically taxes is a very important topic and all the insurances and other duties and responsibilities that apply to uh, employees. What would be the duties of, of uh, the consultant in this 
consultant, contractor, or trainee, uh, whichever that extended uh, title or role would be described. How to treat the proprietary information and confidentiality, the same could be extended, uh, but with additional considerations, the same to no competing, no competing and, and so forth. Uh, inventions, so these are if someone comes up with a really great uh, even potentially like patentable idea or a concept or model, then in the context of working specifically for, for this company on a great assignment, then how would that right uh, transfer between the one who come up with as a consultant versus the company's right? And then of course the term and termination and assignment. How long is this assignment for? When does it start? When does it end? How is it evaluated if it was delivered uh, as agreed? So here's this kind of uh, a quick uh, forefield uh, or matrix to, to kind of think of what are the motivators. This goes more for the extend, uh, extended team members. So if it's proven talent and, and reliability, a known person or closely known person in the capability, uh, if they're motivated by vision and challenges, so personal growth and the vision of the venture versus motivated by money uh, and vision. So are they looking to grow as individual or are they just looking to get paid? Still need to agree on the on the part. And, and the more uncertain it is, uh, the, the, or less unknown it is, then it's the types of considerations for, for, for type of uh, agreements. And uh, really the, the salary option, the base fixed salary should only be considered when there's enough resources and the better, it, the more it becomes from revenue, the more relevant and, and real it is. So uh, taking financing just to pay salaries is, is also a time bomb. You only have so much time to catch up and get the revenue working. So we, any option to, to to be able to avoid that and design that in um, is, is a protection for the company and therefore protection for all the owners as well. <clears throat>